बिसमीम्स डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दी ऑनलाइन लेक्चर ऑन मैटलैब सिमुलेशन ऑफ नॉन लीनियर कंट्रोल सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस रोबस्ट आइट्रेटिव लर्निंग कंट्रोल वाया कंटिन्यूस स्लाइडिंग मोड टेक्निक विद वैलिडेशन ऑन अ सर्वो सिस्टम सो Uh, the special thing about this uh, lecture is that we are going to go into the iterative learning control and the, the next thing is that we are going to implement iterative learning control via continuous uh, sliding mode control technique so this uh, journal has been published in the mechatronic uh, this paper has been published in the mechatronics journal uh, in 2012 so it is a little bit old but uh, it's a still useful paper to discuss Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of the paper. I will only discuss the relevant parts, and uh, then we can uh, discuss how to simulate the results uh, of the paper or how to simulate the controller presented in the paper. So, first of all, the system that is being discussed in this paper these uh, these are the integrator type systems where uh, each of the state is uh, the derivative of the next state. For example, x1 dot is equal to x2, x2 dot is equal to x3, x3 dot is equal to x4, and so on. And the last state is a function of you know the full state vector and the control. This is quite standard form uh, used in uh, a lot of uh, control system. uh design benchmarking and testing etc and uh, a lot of uh, systems can be converted into this form uh, uh by some transformations uh that are that we are not going to discuss in this lecture uh, but there are transformations uh, of uh, uh, linear and non linear systems uh, which you can use to convert uh, a system into this form okay so uh, there are some assumptions uh, for example desirable output uh, has to be differentiable disturbance should be bounded inertial conditions should be zero and so on and the main result of the paper is presented uh, right away so this is uh, the main result this is the control law that we are going to implement today for the servo rotary system and this is the estimation uh, this is basically the iterative this is the iterative part of the control law uh, so this is the iterative estimation of the parameter theta and we will i will show you how we can implement the iterations in solving od45 this is the integrator part of the sliding mode control um, which you know uh, which is represented by an additional state v uh, that uh, we use uh, to uh, implement the integration based control so this is the sliding surface which is uh, c1 times error plus c2 times the derivative of error plus c3 times the double derivative of error and you keep on going uh, up to the m terms m is the number of state variables uh, in the system so at the end of this paper the numerical example has only two states so m in that case will be equal to 2 and we will only have two terms in the sliding surface uh, c1 into error plus c2 into the derivative of the error okay then uh, this theorem basically the proven result that the sliding surface proposed in equation 5 6 and 7 can guarantee the system output tracking error uh, to be zero and that we will see in numerical example as well so we don't go into the proof of uh, this result but rather we go into the so there are some constant parameters uh, for which the values i could not find in the paper but i have selected uh, the values using my own intuition or you know you can uh, change the values select the values using your own intuition play around with the values and see how the values affect the uh, performance of the control so experiment uh, test bed quantizers uh, srv02 system uh, which is shown in this figure uh, we do not perform hardware experiments we use the matlab for simulations these are some equations related to the system but uh, after all the equations and the most useful equation for our purposes is the state space dynamics 
which is given here in uh, equation 35 so the derivative of uh, the angle is angular velocity and the derivative of angular velocity is uh, this function of angular velocity plus uh, this vm is the control input and this uh, tau ml is uh, you can consider it to be as some sort of a disturbance so without any further delay let me show you how uh, you can write the code of uh, this system i have uh, i have run the code already on my computer before starting this video to save some time because i want my videos to be as short as possible with the maximum uh, amount of uh, facilitation of in terms of learning anyways so these are the parameter values rm kt km and so on so these parameter values if you look and at the paper they are given in this table primarily okay so uh, further if you look at uh, the uh, tau ml that is the load torque divided by some uh, constant uh, parameters uh, which are mostly related to the internal gearbox ratio and external gear ratio uh, so load torque in this case is uh, sort of like disturbance so it's not given in the paper but i have assumed it to be a random number between 0 and 1 using the rand command in matlab then uh, the desirable trajectory uh, for the theta i have uh, taken the desirable trajectory of theta to be sine of t and uh, of course the omega is the derivative of theta so the desirable corresponding trajectory for omega will be uh, cos uh, cosine of t which is the derivative of sine of t these are the parameters of uh, well this code is for pid control but anyways uh, let me first show you this pid so this is the proportional gain and this is the derivative gain that i have selected this paper does not discuss pid control this paper discuss the iterative control with sliding mode but i have uh, prepared you know a comparison between the iterative sliding mode control versus the pid control so this is the proportional and derivative gain these are the errors uh, x1 desire value minus x1 actual value x2 desire value minus x2 actual value this is the control uh, control law uh, proportional gain times the error plus derivative gains times the derivative of the error which is given by this x2 desired minus x2 and plus integral uh, gain uh, which is 5 times the integrator state which is integrator state is such that the derivative of the integrator state is equal to error and these are the dynamics uh, given in the paper the uh, the servo system dynamics given in equation 35 uh, x1 dot is equal to x2 and x2 dot is equal to this e is this whole thing this whole thing i have uh, defined in my code as capital e and then uh, this eta m k t v m these are all uh, parameters and the control law which are already given so this is the code to implement pid control on uh, this uh, system of equation 35 and now let me show you the other code which is very similar to this one the same constants the same uh, intuition for load torque uh, same value of x1 desire x2 desire this now c1 and c2 are the uh, constant parameters for the sliding surface and e, e and e dot are the same as for the pid control now additional thing that here we have is the sliding surface c1 times error plus c2 times error derivative uh, remember this so if I go back up, uh, you can see here the, the, the sliding surface is C1 error plus C2 times error derivative and so on. Since we have only two states, we only need two terms in the sliding surface. This is the same thing E that is in the dynamics of the system. Now this is the iterative learning part. So the iterative learning part is given by this equation of uh, theta hat equation 6 which I have implemented here in uh, line number 13 of my code. So you can uh, see here that uh, so I have run it for 40 times uh, so 40 iterations theta uh, next updated value of theta is the previous value of theta uh, minus this whole thing. So remember this E 
this e is the capital e in the paper and the q value of q q is a constant parameter which is not given in the paper so i have assumed it to be equal to 1 similarly i could not find the value of constant parameter eta in the paper so i have assumed 4 4 eta by 3 to be equal to 1 and uh, gamma is also a constant so i have assumed it to be equal to 1 and it works fine for me so so this is the resulting equation for theta by the way uh, you can uh, you know uh, pause this video right here take a, a screenshot and copy this code uh, i really don't like sharing uh, the uh, code files uh, directly with you because i believe that if you copy the code by your own self it is a good learning experience in itself because e even in typing the code you make certain errors and when you make errors uh, then you learn from your mistakes and then your programming skills will increase if you just uh, you know uh, if i just give you the file right away and you just uh, click the run button or something then it's not going to it's going to be a zero learning for you so all the skills will remain with me and you will have nothing except for maybe some bits of data okay so uh, this is the v dot equation beta 1 beta 2 are not given in the paper so i have assumed them to be equal to 1 uh, beta 1 equal to 1 beta 2 equal to 1 so this is minus beta 1 sigma is minus s uh, sigma the sliding surface is represented by s in my code so this is the uh, the derivative uh, the x3 dot this is equation 7 in the paper and finally we return all the derivatives for ode 45 to work and now uh, now we have two control laws here this is the iterative control law based on uh, smc and this is the pid control law and now we have this file where we uh, call uh, ODE45 uh, we use the ODE45 to solve the sliding uh, mode control iterative uh, learning uh, sliding mode control and then we also solve the PID control so we solve both the control the solution of the sliding mode control is stored in uh, T and X and the solution of PID control is stored in T2 and X2 these are the constant values that we need in order to recreate the control signal and the sliding surface and so on so for recreating the errors and the sliding surface and the control input in the uh, you know in this file the script file related to ODE45 we need the same lines of code except that instead of x1 we need xi comma 1 instead of x2 we need xi comma 2 so if I go back to uh, this file you can see here that uh, e is equal to x1 desire minus x1 and if you come here ei the ith element of e is x1 desired minus xi comma 1 so x is the solution of this uh, trajectory and then we use the same equations but we don't have to be careful with the indices and similarly x1 desire is sine of t of i so this is the sine of the ith element of time so we do it for all the elements of time and then we recreate the control uh, control law using the same equation as in the as in uh, this this code so vm uh, not this one this one so vm is equal to this whole thing so this equation is the same as uh, uh, this equation except for the indices so this is vi of m and so and sliding s of i and similarly uh, wherever applicable the indices are being used so uh, then you can also uh, recreate uh, uh, using another for loop you can recreate the x1 desired uh, sorry e e error for the pid control the derivative of error for pid control the control law for pid control so once you have all this then you can plot uh, here i have uh, plotted uh, so figure one has two plots first plot is uh, uh, theta versus theta reference for a sliding mode control second plot is theta versus theta reference for pid control in figure 2 the first plot is uh, uh, omega versus omega reference for uh, 
the uh, uh, sliding mode control and then the second plot is omega versus omega reference for the uh, for the for the PID control so this is for PID control omega versus omega reference then I have also plotted the con two control uh, signals and then I have also plotted the error values for both type of uh, controllers so let's look at the plots let's look at figure one if you look at figure one you can see here that the reference tracking is perfect by the sliding mode control and it is a little bit less perfect for the PID control it does not mean that the PID control is inferior to the sliding mode control it just means that I have not tuned the PID control to make it more accurate so if you want to make this PID control behavior more accurate you can play around with these gains so this this is the PID control so if I, you this is the proportional gain is 150 derivative gain is 1 and the integral gain is 5 so this is just you know crude assessment just I have put these values in using my own intuition you can try to increase the proportional gain increase or decrease the derivative gain increase or decrease the integral gain and see what happens to the response is the performance increasing or uh, improving or de degrading so in that way using hit and trial uh, you can improve the gains of PID and then you know it depends upon how much time you have or uh, how uh, good you are in in tuning the gains uh, so you can tune baby steps at a time or take large steps it, it just depends upon your own skills of uh, tuning then uh, so these are the results so you can see that uh, reasonable tracking by PID control without uh, extensive tuning and excellent tracking by uh, the uh, sliding mode control this is the tracking of uh, the uh, angular velocities you can see that the ang omega and omega ref are almost overlapping in sliding mode control and for PID control there are some you know some problems due to remember that we have this random load torque acting on the system so PID control does not cater for the random load torque whereas the sliding mode control does cater for the random load torque Work. and next we have uh, the diagram now you see here that the control effort due to sliding mode control that is pretty large this is the this dark blue is the control effort due to sliding mode control whereas the control effort due to PID control is almost zero compared to that so if I zoom that you can see here that this is the control effort due to PID control and the control effort due to PID control is uh, let me just zoom this so this is the control effort due to PID control which is like really really small effort so even though the performance of PID is not as good as sliding mode but but the look at this difference between the control effort so PID control control effort is really really less compared to the one in the sliding mode control so there are some parameters in the sliding mode control that I have selected uh, by myself which I could not find in the paper so you can also tune the parameters of the sliding mode control for example the value of gamma the value of eta the value of q and then value of beta 1 the value of beta 2 similarly the the values of uh, you know this uh, alpha 3 uh, this alpha 3 value I have taken it to be 100 so you can take it to any other value alpha 1 so these are the parameters that you can play with and do further research beyond this video and these are the error values you can see the errors due to sliding mode control are are in blue which are you know almost zero and the errors due to uh, PID are you know is go up to 0 0.1 in this case it goes to maybe 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 up to this case in terms of magnitude so yeah that that is uh, all that I have to say about this paper I hope that this will uh, keep you going uh, at the end I will just uh, show you the code again so this is the script file code so you can uh, take a screenshot of here from line number 1 to line number 32 and then you can take a screenshot here from line number 29 to line number 60 
and then you can you know type this code by yourself and this is the code of uh, the PID control and this is the code of the uh, iterative learning based sliding mode control so i hope that this video will be useful for you thank you for listening